kind of a type A personality. I've worked in marketing for a number of years. And then just a few months ago, we started a food truck, my husband and I. Hi, what can I get you today? Morning. I would love to have a death bite chocolate. Oh, we can definitely do that. That's a good one. Thank you so much, sir. It's a passion project of mine, and I'm just having a good time with it. Oh, Alyssa and I have been married for just over 15 years. I have three littles. I love to cook and do photography, and I'm, we're really big into outdoors and playing in nature as a family. There we go. She just decided, you know, triathlons are, are something I'd like to do. So she started pursuing that, and turns out she was pretty good at them. And, and she was uh, really getting to the, the real prime of her triathlete career when we started noticing things. I started experiencing a lot of weight gain, body fatigue, muscle ache. It was kind of a fog that moved in and just made everything harder. She started tracking her calorie intake and her weight really closely. So I was burning 2,000, only eating 1,400, and I was still gaining about five to 10 pounds a week. So I was freaked out. My name is Alyssa Agee, and I've been diagnosed with Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease is caused by a pituitary tumor that's secreting ACTH. That ACTH will be secreted whenever the tumor wants to secrete ACTH, and that ACTH will go to the adrenals unregulated, and the adrenal will secrete extra cortisol, and this is what Cushing's disease is. A lot of people think about cortisol as a stress hormone, and it's indeed a stress hormone, but the cortisol, it's also needed for metabolism. So everything from metabolism of glucose, protein, and lipids depends on cortisol. And without cortisol, nobody can live. If you have too much, it's a problem too. When you're doing all the right things to be a healthy, well-balanced individual and your body is betraying you, in some ways you start to lose your mind. The most important thing for somebody that has any signs of excess cortisol will be to step back and try and figure out what's going on. Late one night, my husband Brian and I just started typing in every um, symptom that I was currently experiencing. So that one, but uh, definitely difficulty concentrating and the mm -hmm. headaches, fatigue. And the only thing that came up that addressed all of them was Cushing's disease. So when I went to my endocrinologist appointment, her first response was, have you checked into what you're eating? It was an extremely frustrating appointment because I laid out for her, look, I'm an athlete. Yes, I have been tracking my diet. And she just didn't have a whole lot of answers for me. So patients have to be their own advocates, especially for rare diseases. For Cushing's disease, it's very important to diagnose earlier because it's mostly in younger patients. And we have shown in many, many studies that the longer it takes to get to the diagnosis, the longer it takes for the patient to recover. So for the next three months, we did a variety of cortisol tests so once we're done with the confirmatory testing, then the patient should go through the localization diagnosis part. What that means is MRI of the pituitary. In January of 2015, I had an MRI done of my head. And six weeks later, on February 14th, 
I received a call from my endocrinologist. The very first words out of her mouth are, we found something on your pituitary. And I just remember that feeling that hit me that first time. And it was actually relief. She was definitely still declining and, and, and in rough shape. But you know, when you have a goalpost, you can focus all your energy on that and you can get through what you need to get through. So in general, the treatment, especially in US, we do transphenoidal surgery as first line of treatment. They can generally tell with pretty good confidence within the first 24 hours, based on your natural cortisol levels, whether they were able to get the right tumor or not. And so I was kind of on the edge of my seat for the first, you know, six, 10 hours, and then the numbers weren't looking good. And that's kind of when I knew it wasn't gonna be over. The disease came back after the initial surgery, and then she had a second surgery. Generally, um, if you've had a successful surgery, they give you 15 to 20 years in remission before they really expect to see your Cushing symptoms redevelop, if at all. Um, I got 18 months. We don't really know why in some patients the disease is coming back, even after successful surgery. We used to think that if you are in remission, you are done. Now it's coming back in 30 to 35% of patients, sometimes sooner than later. The highest uh, risk of recurrence is within five years. There have re been reports of coming back at 20 years. So you're really never out of the woods with this disease. It's really forced us to reprioritize and think about what we do with all of our time. Do the things that are important now. Have the conversations that you need to have now. So we did that with a lot of things. For me personally, I know this sounds crazy, but Cushing's has been the biggest blessing because it's taught me to be present more than I think I ever was prior to my diagnosis. Every day matters, and you start to see every day in its vivid possibility. After my diagnosis with Cushing's, and particularly um, around the time when I came out of remission and there wasn't a clear answer right away, I started writing poetry again, and I haven't stopped. A cautionary tale to a girl in hair bows the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what a beautiful way to use something really challenging and pretty devastating and create something beautiful out of it. Small beads of sweat drip as she fights against all odds, as she demands of the body to move, to rise, to persevere. One of the devastating side effects of Cushing's disease for women is that it wreaks havoc on your menstrual cycle. My uh, doctors warned me that the chances of getting pregnant ever again were very, very low, if, if anything. I just went about life as normal, and then lo and behold, we ended up pregnant, which was a huge surprise. We call him our, our miracle baby because he was not supposed to be. <laughs> Are you sure? Cushing's affects your entire being. So I've basically created a team that helps me address holistically my quality of life in its entirety. And that includes acupuncture, it includes chiropractic care. My grandmother does Reiki. I'm on her table multiple times a week. I see a Jungian therapist. I currently take a, an oral medication two times a day that has proved extremely effective in managing my Cushing symptoms.
And in general, after the second surgery, we're not recommending further surgery. Usually we go to medical therapy as a uh, second line therapy. We have several meds available right now. We didn't used to have anything before 2012. So all of this is recent. I lost 30 pounds. I can exercise again. I can play outside with my kids and not get exhausted within minutes. And not only my energy levels have improved, but my mood, my outlook on life has significantly improved. Someone could hear. He says goodnight all you moonlight ladies. Rock of my sweet baby James. I'd have to say that the most important thing is that this is a journey that you have to take together. I think there's a lot of inspiration to be had from it. I mean, if you look at what Alyssa's done for, for people in our lives to say, look, there's nothing too big that you can't overcome it. There's proof. The quality of life in Cushing's is improving in all patients that are control. Are we there where we want to be? Uh, almost. With a multimodal treatment, we can induce remission we have to increase awareness about the disease overall, and all of us in the medical profession have to, to think how we can screen patients earlier. My goal is for every patient with Cushing's to find the right treatment uh, for that patient and not to give up until the patient is controlled biochemically, no problem with the tumor, and also feels good. The last time I got to race as a triathlete was four years ago, and it's been a long journey, but I am really excited that my body is in a place now where I can consider training again, and that's what I'm doing. Every day is showing up and doing what I love and being with the people that I love, and that makes every day the best day.